Graph the exponential function y equals 3 to the power of x and state its asymptote. Okay, well whenever we're asked to graph an exponential function, a great way of going about it is to draw up a table of values, so a table of x values, and then plug each of those x values into this function and then record the corresponding y values. So let's do that. Let's draw up a table of x values and y values. And here, let's consider minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, and 2 as our input values. And let's evaluate the corresponding y values, then plot each of these on this graph here. So let's consider at we've got y equals 3 to the power of x and at x equals minus 3, what we're going to have, we'll do this in a different color, we'll do it in green, what we're going to have is 3 to the power of minus 3. Well, according to our indice laws, whenever we have, say, a to the, the power of minus 1, that's 1 over a, or a to the, to the um, power of minus 2, that's 1 over a squared or another way of saying that is 1 over a squared. So here we can write 3 to the power of minus 3. This is going to be equal to 1 over 3 to the power of 3. What's 3 to the power of 3? Well, 3 to the power of 3 is going to be uh, 3 times 3 times 3. 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. So this is going to be 1 over 27. Okay, what about y equals 3 to the power of minus 2. Here we've got x equals minus 2, so 3 to the power of minus 2. Well, again, by this indice law relationship, we're going to have 1 over 3 to the power of 2. 3 times 3 is 9, so 1 over 3 squared is going to be equal to 1 over 9. Let's have a look at x equals minus 1. At x equals minus 1, we have y equals 3 to the power of 1. Sorry, 3 to the power of minus 1. And this is going to be equal 1 over 3 to the power of 1. 1 over 3 to the power of 1, that's just 1 over 3. What about 0? 3 to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. For instance, a to the power of 0 always equals 1. So here, 3 to the power of 0 equals 1. 3 to the power of 1, that just equals 3. And here we've got 3 to the power of 2 x equals 2. So 3 squared, that equals 9. Great, so we've got a few points here. Let's plot them on this graph to see if we can get an idea of what this function is going to look like. So uh, we've got x at x equals minus 3, y equals 1 over 27. So that's going to be three units left of the origin. So 1, 2, 3. And it's going to be a tiny fraction of a unit up. It's going to be 1 over 27, which is very tiny. So we can sort of draw this point about there. So you can see that we've got a point that's very, very close to y equals 0, but isn't y equals 0. It's just above y equals 0, because 1 over 27 is greater than 0. This is greater than 0. What about at x equals minus 2? Well, at x equals minus 2, we have y equals 1 over 9. So x equals minus 2, that's 2 units left of the origin. And then 1 over 9. It's still positive, but it's larger than our original point. So I might be able to draw this point here like this. So still very close to zero, but a bit larger than the, the y coordinate above. Here we've got x equals minus one and y equals a third. Okay, so x equals minus one, that's one unit left of the origin, and y equals one third. So that's going to be about, about there, okay? Here we've got x equals 0, y equals 1. So it's going to be 0 units left to right of the origin, 1 unit up. We've got x equals 1 and y equals 3. So it's going to be 1 unit right of the origin and 3 units up. And then we're going to have at x equals 2, y equals 9. So that's 2 units left of the origin and 9 units up. Okay, so we've graphed these points. And because we've reviewed what an exponential function generally looks like, we know that what's going to happen is that on this right-hand side of the graph, this uh, we've got sh values, y values that shoot up in response to very small increases in x values. So consequently, we're going to have 
this part of the function is going to look a bit like this and it's going to go, whoops, let's redraw that. It's going to go up like this and it's going to continue shooting up. So we'll draw an arrow here. Whereas this part of the function passes through this point, it's going to get closer and closer to y equals zero, but it's never going to reach y equals zero. So we're going to get an exponential function which looks like that. Now that isn't perfect, but it's, it's pretty good. It's okay, it's a drawing. So we can label this as y equals three to the power of x. Now it says, we, we've now graphed this exponential function. It then asks us to state its asymptote. Let's quickly review what an asymptote is. An asymptote describes the behavior of this curve where as x goes to infinity or x goes to minus infinity, if y gets closer and closer to a certain value but never quite reaches that value, and specifically in this example, if y becomes closer and closer to zero, then we can say that the asymptote of this curve is the line y equals zero. So here we can see that decreasing values of x, particularly as x gets negative and large, are associated with y values that are very, very small, but always positive. So we've got one third for x equals minus one, then x equals minus two, we've got one ninth, which is smaller, and x equals minus three, we've got one twenty seventh, which is smaller again. If we were to continue writing negative large x values, we'd find y values that are closer and closer to zero, but never quite reach zero. So consequently, the behavior is as x goes to minus infinity, we've got y goes to zero, but it never quite reaches zero. So consequently, we can say the asymptote here is the line y equals zero. Another way of saying that is the x-axis. So the asymptote, asymptote is the line y equals zero. And this is the asymptote, and we're done.